عباده الذين اختفى ما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين الحمد لله رب العالمين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about the munafiqeen that these people, the hypocrites, they come to the Muslims and say that they have brought faith. And when they go back in their own company, they say that we are from among you and we were only humoring them. We were only humoring them. Allahu yastazi ubihim wa yamudhum fi tuqyanihim ya'mahum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that they are not they are not humoring anybody, they are not fooling anybody. Allah is is ridiculing them. Allah is ridiculing them. The hadith that we are going to start today, inshallah, and there's only two hadiths given in this subject here in this book, is something called Dhul Wajhain. Somebody with two faces, two faced people. Dhul Wajhain. In Urdu we call Dorukha. Dorukha. So basically essentially the same. Two-faced, Dhul Wajhain and Dorukha literally mean the same thing as well. That somebody who somebody who when in a certain group or in a certain gathering or a certain situation acts in a certain way and then when they are not in that company, they act totally different. <coughs> قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تجدون الشر الناس يوم القيامة ذا الوجهين الذي يأتي هؤلاء بوجه وهؤلاء بوجه هذا ابو هريرة رضي الله عنه سر رواية ذكر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لشاهد فرمايا كتوم قيامة كدين سب سے برے حال میں اس شخص کو پاؤ گے جو کچھ لوگوں کے پاس جاتا ہے تو اس کا رخ اور ہوتا ہے اور دوسروں کے پاس جاتا ہے تو اس کا رخ اور ہوتا ہے بخاری و مسلم کی حدیث Allah Ta'ala Ni Quran Abu Rayyad Radhi Allah Wa'an has narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that on the day of judgment the worst you will find a person would be the one who when goes to a certain group of people he has a different face and then when they go to another group of people they have a different face Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Himself has said in the Quran that إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ They would be in the lowest in the bottom most part of the hellfire. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is a sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is one thing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like to be shared. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like to be, does not like to have partners. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants 100% faithfulness, 100% loyalty. If you are becoming my slave, if you are my slave, you have to be my slave. And you have to be my slave in all situations and in all circumstances. Those people who clearly ascribe partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are called mushrik. The people who commit shirk or associate partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, polytheists. But the thing to think about it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not put did not say about the kuffar that they will be in the worst place or in the worst state as in this hadith but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that the munafiqeen the hypocrites will be in an even worse shape an even worse shape and this hadith says says this says the same thing as well so we have to think why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these munafiqeen most of them were like the ones who the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to gain the benefit of being a Muslim. So when in Medina particularly Muslims were in the government the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the ruler and whoever was Muslim although the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam established exemplary justice but these people, 
because of the disease in their heart, they wanted to gain the benefit of being a Muslim. And that is why portrayed themselves as Muslims. Portrayed themselves as Muslims. <clears throat> so when they would come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the Sahaba, they would say that we are Muslims and act like Muslims. But the thing that was worse than Kuffar was that they became part of the general gathering of Muslims and were always a source of harm to Muslims, a source of causing disrupt in the activities of Muslims. So the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba would be thinking one way and they would be thinking of doing something some way and these people would find a situation <coughs> in which Muslims could be harmed and then put that thing before the Prophet ﷺ and try to convince the Sahaba according to that, to that thing. This is the reason that these people proved even more harmful than Kuffar because Kuffar were the open enemy. Kuffar were the open enemy. Similarly, the people who are two-faced. So this is about Aqaid, right? Munafiqeen had a disease in their heart. They were two-faced in terms of their Aqaid. They were not really Muslims deep down and they would portray as Muslims and they would harm the Muslims. The meaning of the hadith is general. The meaning of the hadith is general. It's not only about aqaid. It's not only about aqaid. So, as it is written here in explanation, there's people who would meet you on their face. They would portray as if they are your closest friend. They are your closest friend. They would praise you. The action that you've done, they would praise you. They will, in fact, give you a false advice just to gain your pleasure. And when they would be behind your back, in a different group of people, maybe with whom you are not very good, ter with very good terms on, they would be totally opposite to what they are in before you. And they would take reports and news of your situation and carry it to your people who are trying to harm you or people who do not have your best will at their heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has in this hadith given a very stern warning for even those people who do that with an ill will. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. If we consider our situation to some extent, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us to some extent. I'm not saying that we have disease in our aqaid. Alhamdulillah, we are all Muslims and although we may have a lot of shortcoming in actual doing, in actual deeds. Alhamdulillah and inshallah it is hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have firm belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the finality of the Prophet of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the basic aqaid and a'mal and faraid of Islam. Although we may not be doing them, we may not be fulfilling completely to the full extent the requisites of it. But <clears throat> if you look at our own lifestyle, a lot of times knowingly or unknowingly because of certain pressure or because of anything we act differently in different situations so when we are in a group of people about whom we know that if we say something if we say something which is the right truthful thing they will not take it very nicely they will not take it very nicely we do Something called kitman. Something called covering the truth. Kitman is hiding the truth. Something that you know that is the truth and you hide it. You hide it. And when we know that this thing that we have in our mind and we know for, true, for sure to be true, if we know that the people that we are sitting amongst, they will take it very nicely. They will take, take it very good. They will be pleased with it. We say that, we say that. In the hadith that we are reading about ghibat last week, there is one thing that relates to this as well. If you are in a gathering, if you are in a gathering, there is a, a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that if a slave of Allah is in need of help, if a slave of Allah is in need of help and someone else has the full capacity to help them, has the full capacity to help them 
and still they choose not to help them. Still they choose not to help them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us of a very bad end for those people. Very bad end. They will not be helped when they need help from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And who does not need help from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? Why I remember this here today is that the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned that if you are in a gathering in which someone else's ghibat is being done, someone else's ghibat is being done, you should, if you do not have the capacity to stop those people, the least that you can do to help your brother who is in need of help at this time is to start praising them. Start praising them. So if somebody is talking about someone behind their back and enumerating their faults and shortcomings, if we cannot directly tell them that, look, this is ghibat, we should stop. The, the least that we can do is that we could say, yes, but that person has such and such and such and such good qualities. He's a very sincere person. He may not, he may not have a lot of worldly capacities or the capacity to do things the right way. Or he may, he may do things in a funny way or whatever is going on depending on the situation. But we should talk about something else that is good about them. At least this much, at least this much we should have that we are not two-faced. We are not two-faced. Because if we are in front of that person, we will meet them nicely. Living in this society, it is considered a very good thing that you are a two-faced person. That you are, it is considered something very wise that you become a two-faced person. And it is considered wisdom, it is considered hikmat that when I was with them, I said some sweet words, I was a nice talker, I was a good talker. And because of that, I achieved certain such and such thing. I made them come to terms with such and such things. My dear respected brothers, to be two-faced is despised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's despised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One thing that should be remembered is that what is wisdom in this regard? Wisdom is that you do not hurt the feelings of someone. You do not hurt the feelings of someone. If somebody is doing something wrong, if somebody is doing something wrong, especially in terms of deen and aqidah, or even in worldly matters, in worldly matters we could stay quiet if somebody is about to do something wrong and we know that if we warn them, they are going to take it very badly. In worldly matters there may be permission, but in terms of aqidah and in terms of deen, we should very politely say the right thing to them. We should very politely but say the right thing to them. عن عمار قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من كان ذا وجهين في الدنيا كان له يوم القيامة يوم القيامة لسانان من نار هذا عمار بن ياسر رضي الله عنه في رواية كلا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في فرمايا دنيا من جو شخص دو رخا هوجا قيامة كي دين اس كي موم ميں آگ کی دو زبانیں ہوں گی هذا عمار بن ياسر رضي الله عنه في رواية كلا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم has said that whoever is in this world a two faced person on the day of judgment, they would have in their mouth two tongues of fire. So in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ has hinted at two things. The meaning of the hadith is apparent, but two things are, are very apparent. Number one is that this two-faced, being two-faced, we should be very particular about what we say. So. Less so, even though that is also very common, but less so, people act in a way that they, they have, they, they act in, in two different ways with two different people. But more so, what we should be concerned about is our tongue, is our tongue. We are talking sweet to someone and we are talking against them behind their back. <clears throat> especially with an intention of harming them, especially with an intention of harming them. If you think about it, in our families particularly, in our families and at our workplace as well. We should look and we should seriously consider if we are doing this or not. That in front of one person, we are acting or saying different things. Behind their back, we are complaining about them. Behind their, their, their back, we are counting their faults. We are completing our tasbih of their faults. That they did this, they did this, they did this, they said this, they said this, this they said this. This is being two-faced. We are friends on their on their face. We are th their enemy behind their back. The second thing that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has hinted at here is that such a person 
which animal has two tongues in their face, in their mouth? The snakes. Some some snakes have two tongues in their mouth or bifid tongue, bifid or bifid, whatever how you say it. So the Prophet sallallahu has in a way mentioned that those people are as harmful, like harmful, like the snakes. This is written in the explanation here that they, they, they speak, these people are basically snakes in the form of human beings. And on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it apparent that these people had two tongues. With one they would say good things about people, with the other they would say other bad things about people. Allah has quoted another ayah in the explanation here. وَتَحْسَبُونَهُ هَيِّنًا وَهُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَظِيمٌ There's things that people consider light. There's things that people consider light. وَهُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَظِيمٌ They are very, they are huge, they are grand, they are, they are very weighty in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from it. <clears throat> this concludes the chapter of social evils and the evils of the tongue particularly the bottom line is that number one and that is basically the case for every single thing that we have to be sincere we have to be sincere Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like disloyal people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like people who are not sincere and secondly, we have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet We have to do things the way the Prophet has told us to do. Whatever standards the Prophet has set, they are the standard. Those are the standards for us. If this world is telling us to be two-faced, if this world is telling us to hide the facts at times just to gain the pleasure of somebody, or if, the, if this world is telling us that the wise thing to do is to uh, to act differently with people behind their back and on their face. The standard that the Prophet ﷺ has told us is the standard. One thing I wanted to mention is that I have mentioned before as well that one thing is being two-faced, which is in a way of harming people. We change our behavior and our attitude and our ways our way of talking about people the other thing is that telling people their faults telling people if somebody everybody is full of faults all of us have faults what is the right way of telling somebody their fault i have mentioned it before but this is something that we need to be really particular about because the things the prophet ﷺ has said that on the day of judgment because of the tongue most people will enter Jahannam. Most people will enter Jahannam because of their tongue. And in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ has said that they would be apni zawanon ke bal Jahannam mein daale jayenge. They would be put, they would be thrown over their tongues in the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. When we have to tell somebody their fault, the Prophet ﷺ has given a very good example. The Prophet ﷺ has said that a mu'min is, is like a mirror to another mu'min. A mirror, when asked, tells very quietly only the person who has asked the mirror their fault. They do not publicize it. The mirror does not publicize it. Similarly, a mu'min does not publicize the faults of another mu'min. The other thing is that some people say that thinking about these hadiths, knowing these hadiths, some people say that I am not a two-faced person, I say it to the face of people. I say it to the face of people. When there is a fault in someone, when there is a fault in someone, we are not, Islam does not require from us to sternly and harshly point out their face or to their face their fault. No. This is talking about harming them and being sly, being deceitful towards people. If somebody has a fault, and that may be of any kind, that may be a physical fault or a fault of a personality, we should, just like I said, very quietly and secretly, in a way of goodwill, in a way of having 
pain at our heart for their well-being. Say this, say the fault to them very quietly and secretly and beautifully, not in a way that will hurt them. Some people like to hurt people on their face and say bad things about them right on their face and say that I am not a two-faced person, I say it like it is, on the face of everyone. That is not required by Islam. That is not recommended by the Prophet Wasallam. The way the Prophet Wasallam has taught is to quietly and secretly and do it beautifully. Inshallah, the next chapter will start next week. Inshallah, we'll read a naat and then uh, we'll jump off your phone. Phone after phone. بہشت 
सुतरे जिधर जागे रसूल बारिक क्या सुतरे जिधर जागे रसूल अरब के रेग सारों से जहाँ पाता है सी सकनी अरब के रेग सारों से जहाँ पाता है सी सकनी अरब के रेग सारों से जहाँ पाता है सी सकनी वही है जिंदगी जिस जा ठहर जाए रसूल वही है जिंदगी जिस जा ठहर जाए रसूल मैं हूँ प्यासा तरसता हूँ आवाज सुनने को मैं हूँ प्यासा तरस जाता हूँ फिर आवाज सुनने को मुझे जामे मुहाबत खूब पिलवाए रसूल बड़ी मुद्दत हुई मैं गोश पर आवाज मुतर हूँ बड़ी मुद्दत हुई मैं गोश पर आवाज मुतर हूँ मुझे गुफ्तार के नगमे भी सुनवाए रसूल मुझे गुफ्तार के नग में भी सुनवाए रसूल तब सुम आपके रुख पर अदाए नाज ही ऐसी तब सुम आपके रुख पर अदाए नाज ही ऐसी तब सुम आपके रुख पर अदाए नाज ही ऐसी फिदा होने को दुनिया है जो फरमाए रसूल अल्लाह फिदा होने को दुनिया है जो फरमाए रसूल अल्लाह वो चेहरा आपका उस पर सजी एक नूर की कमली वो चेहरा आपका उस पर सजी एक नूर की कमली वो चेहरा आपका उस पर सजी एक नूर की कमली मुझे कुछ और भी दिखला के तड़पाए रसूल अल्लाह मुझे कुछ और भी दिखला के तड़पाए रसूल अल्लाह मेरी जानब करम से देखिए दर पर पड़ा हूँ मैं मेरी जानब करम से देखिए दर पर पड़ा हूँ मैं कभी तो दीद अपने रुख की दिखलाए रसूल अल्लाह कभी तो दीद अपने रुख की दिखलाए रसूल अल्लाह जो अगला शेर है वो याद रखना से वो फजर के वक्त ऐसा हुआ कि हम फजर की नमाज पढ़ने का मौका मिल गया लेकिन उस वक्त हजूर अक्रम सल्ला वसलम की मुआज शरीफ की जगह थी वो बिल्कुल खाली हो गई क्योंकि जब आजान जाती है उसके बाद वो वहाँ का लोग लोग दाखिला रोक देते हैं अलबत्त वो रियाजुलजन्ना से निकल के अगर जाना चाहे तो जा सकता है लेकिन उम्र लोग जाते नहीं कि रियाजुलजन्ना में नमाज पढ़ने की कोशिश करते हैं उस वक्त फजर की अजान हो गई तो मैंने देखा कि मुआज शरीफ बिल्कुल खाली है तो मैंने सोचा कि जन्नत में तो वैसे भी फ़र्ज नमाज नहीं होती तो मुआज शरीफ में चला जाता हूँ उस वक्त ये शेर कहा था मैंने मैं जन्नत छोड़ आया हूँ इसी दीदार की खातिर मैं जन्नत छोड़ आया हूँ इसी दीदार की खातिर मैं जन्नत छोड़ आया हूँ इसी दीदार की खातिर मेरे इश्को मोहब्बत को न आजमाए रसूल अल्लाह मेरे इश्को मोहब्बत को न आजमाए रसूल अल्लाह मेरी जन्नत भी सदका है इन्हीं पुल नूर तलबों का मेरी जन्नत भी सदका है इन्हीं पुल नूर तलबों का 
तुझे कदमों में अपने पास बिठलाए रसूल अल्लाह मुझे कदमों में अपने पास बिठी बिठलाए रसूल अल्लाह मेरे कमजोर ईमा पर रहम खाए रसूल अल्लाह मुझे भी रब से अपने अब तो मिलवाए रसूल अल्लाह Thank you. 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 Thank you.